This YouTuber's Anarchy server will be open for the next 100 days, and I have that long to become the king and rule this Anarchy server, but if I die, I get banned. Will I survive the full 100 days, or will I be assassinated in the pursuit of creating my kingdom? Now sit back and watch as I attempt to survive and become the king of this Anarchy server. As soon as I was released on day one, my goal was to establish a kingdom. My goals were very lofty, but I needed to start with basic materials. So I punched a tree. Next, I had to find a place for my whole team to meet up and I found this castle. After seeing that it was suitable, I decreed that this would be our base for the next 100 days. On the second day, I found a ravine, jumped in it, and spent the next two days getting some coal and iron for our kingdom. On the fourth day, I got myself some more advanced tools. I led my kingdom on a great hunt. We killed many sheep to obtain their mutton, and no, I'm not sorry for what's about to happen. I just made friends with it, obviously. After a brief mining adventure on day five and six, I arranged for our republic to have a mostly fair election. Yes, I know I'm the king and I don't need to be elected, but for the people to recognize my rule, I needed their confidence. And day seven was election day, where we had three major candidates, a random guy, a random anarchist, and yours truly. The first candidate ran on the notion that we need to become the strongest faction in the server. The anarchist, well, I'll let him tell you. Oh yeah, and your socks have to be off. Now that's just not right. And then it came down to my speech to sway over the kingdom. The Butter Republic is the greatest nation on the server and we need to keep it that way. We need to claim our spots as the ruler of this server and we will dominate. I walked off the stage, and now it was time for the people to vote in this very secure election run by a completely unbiased admin. Anyway, I won, and now I'm in charge of the largest faction in the server. On day eight, we started the Ryan Food Initiative. This plan consisted of upsizing our farm and fishing in the small pond we had at our base, and then hunting for more food outside of the base. This food would ensure that we won't have to starve for the remaining 92 days. On the ninth day, one of our allies that was off in the middle of nowhere came back to base and was wearing full diamond armor. I was pretty much still naked. If he kills me, I am banned from the server. After the night passed, I heard some crackling outside the walls. So I sent someone outside to check it out. The whole forest was on fire. I had so many questions racing through my head. Were we under attack? Was this an accident? A distraction? Regardless of the intent behind it, we had to put it out. Everyone on the team stepped up and got the fire under control. The damage was done, but our base was in shambles. We ventured out to find a place to build a permanent base and on our way, stumbled across another team's base. We marked the location so we would be able to check it out later but for now, we needed to stay under the radar. For days after finding that base, we kept looking and looking for places to live and we found nothing. We were not making any progress in finding anyone or anything. At that time, we had lost all concept of time. After days, maybe weeks of endless wandering, one of our team members found a place to set up camp. It was near the world border and in the middle of nowhere. By the time I made it there, we had a sprawling base. With this new base, we finally had somewhere safe to call home. Because of it being in the jungle, we had lots of food. We had tons of sugar cane, an abundance of watermelons. However, I had a sneaking suspicion that the accidental fire that had occurred at the last base was not quite accidental. I could trust nobody. To ensure that my powerful items didn't fall into the wrong hands, I stored them up in a tree where nobody could find them. On day 19, I was down in the mines doing a bit of mining when all of a sudden, the admin of the server challenged me to get a panda. A panda? All right, I can do that. Because I had come from the south, I knew that there was a bamboo forest directly to the south of the base. If there was a panda, it would be there. Once I got to the bamboo forest, I grabbed some bamboo so I could lure a panda to me. Before I could find one, however, Lacuna found one so we fed it to satisfy the admin's wishes. Then we kidnapped it. After stuffing it in a boat, we started to carve a path back home. Then out of nowhere, the admin smited the panda. The admin of course denied all involvement or knowledge of this transpiring. 
After finding a second panda, we started heading back to the base. We got the tunnel built, and by the late night of day 20, we got the pandas back home. While we were off getting the pandas, Welcome In was off in the underworld getting netherite. He got himself plenty of it. There we go. <laughs> I'm about to, I made the Bruh. surfer scared. Oh! And made himself a full netherite armor, just as I found my first diamonds. At this point, we had become the most excessive team on the server. We had the most members, the best gear, and most importantly, a handsome, smart, and overall fantastic red dude leading the whole thing. On day 22 through 25, I continued to mine to get more diamonds and gold to make myself a fancy crown. After finding lots of stuff, I headed back to the base to deposit it. On day 26, I headed back to my home and enchanted my iron pickaxe with efficiency so I could mine more with one pickaxe. Then I used my enchanted book that I had hidden in the tree to give my diamond pickaxe fortune 3. For the next few days, I continued to mine with those pickaxes. I was getting so lucky with the drop rate that some people complained I was x-raying. Unfortunately for them, I was not using x-ray. I could just sniff the diamonds from a mile away. The only way that I would get banned would not be from x-ray. It would only be if I died. After the big haul of diamonds, I started equipping myself and my team for any fight to come. I also gave Stefix his first piece of diamond armor, showing off to the entire server that our team was fully stacked. On days 31 through 35, I kept doing more of the same. Mining, finding diamonds, and getting levels. On day 36, I made my battle axe and named it... Oh. I forgot I named it that. Anyways, I went off into the nether to kill some tall, slenderman looking freaks. After getting some pearls, I started to get more levels so I could enchant even more stuff. In the end, I ended up mining a lot of quartz. I got back on day 38 and started smelting all of the materials that I had got before I headed out to the nether. After that, I tried to get a cat. That didn't work out so well. So I took my anger out on some phantoms. After dealing with them, I got word that LFC KFC was in the nether. He had killed two of our members, so me and one survivor were determined to meet up with Welcomin to find and kill LFC KFC. He had just gotten the fortress achievement, and due to our proximity to one, we had a chance to catch him. Once we got to the fortress, we started running through the fortress trying to cover as much ground as possible to find this murderer. After scanning the fortress, we built up to try and see if he was above the fortress. After finding nothing, in chat we saw that two people had died and one of them died to LFC KFC. He was still in the nether and had just ambushed another team. After finding Welcomin and backing him up, we started looking once again for LFC KFC. While following Welcomin, who thought that he may be headed the right way, one survivor took the chance he saw and pushed me off a staircase straight into lava. Being already damaged and not expecting this betrayal, he took advantage of me and threw me into a lava pit. I got out, but my life was dwindling. I didn't dare look at him. I would not give him that satisfaction. Then, just as quick as I had joined, I was banned. In the past 39 days, I created a nation that lived on conquering the end. The nation continued to dominate the server, surviving the full 100 days, and just as quickly as I was banned, the server closed the door on those past memories. Now if you enjoyed this story of my attempt at surviving 100 days in an anarchy server, be sure to show me some love and hit that subscribe button, as this video took over 50 hours to make. Finally, I bid you farewell YouTube traveler, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.